Today we're going to think about abstract expressionist art, uh, recycling paper, and Robert Motherwell. So Robert Motherwell was an American artist who was known for his abstract expressionist art. And he didn't just use paint and paper or paint and canvas. He used many different supplies to kind of build his, uh, build, build his piece of art. And which, which means that he's a mixed media artist. So media is the, the, the supplies that you use to build your painting or your piece of art or whatever it is you're going to do. And um, mixed means that he's got all different kinds of things coming in and that's what he's using to build his art. So he used pretty much everything, including recycled paper, which is what we're going to be thinking about today. So abstract expressionism, what is that? So abstract is when uh, the piece of art doesn't look exactly the way you would see it in real life. And it's more about color, it's more about feelings, and um, it's usually kind of a more of a representing of something. So if you had a TV, maybe you would just put a square there for a TV. If you had a flower, maybe you would just put a circle for a flower. And uh, then you would add color to show emotion. And that's what expressionism is as well. So expressionism is when you are giving off or making somebody feel something within that painting. And that's really what mostly abstract art is. Uh, it, it can be a lot of different things too, but most abstract art is about the feeling. There were a lot of artists that um, did this. Jackson Pollock was one that was very famous, of course. And he and Motherwell worked together in the 19... Uh, 40s is when they started, 40s and 50s, late 40s, and they started this whole new movement called Abstract Expressionism. Now they did this uh, at, kind of on a dare, and Gloria Steinem, who was uh, one of their great patrons, somebody who kind of helped their careers along, she said that if they came up with something brand new, that she would put on an exhibition for them, and uh, she did. So. Uh, and Jackson Pollock, um, Motherwell, and many others kind of rose to the occasion and built this new form of art. Now Pollock, he would take and he would splatter paint everywhere and lots of different colors and, and um, made us feel through his splatters and through the physical uh, nature of how he put the paint on because he used to throw paint at the wall and all of that. Motherwell uh, wanted us to feel through uh, the w arrangement on the paper. And a lot of times he would take and he would put marks on the paper or he would use words to show us something on his, in his art. And they weren't just small, they were really big pieces of art as well. Uh, expressionism is want, wants you to see how that artist is feeling and, uh, and to, for them to show you how you and to ask you to feel along with them. Uh, there's also a, uh, Mark Rothko used to add layers of color onto his paintings and just uh, like glaze a very light color and another light, light color and another light, light color on top of that. And uh, so every place we would go, every inch of that painting, we would have a different feeling within that painting. Max Beckman, he um, didn't like being called an abstract expressionist or an expressionist, but he too was considered one. And he did, his approach was very different. What he did was he painted himself over and over and over again, all sorts of different paintings, but he showed his emotion through the subject matter. He showed himself really, really sick, and or he showed himself in love, or he showed himself... Uh, happy or sad or what have you. So his approach was a little different. So in the 1950s is when Robert Motherwell started using a lot of paper and paints and uh, charcoal and oil pastels and all of those to make marks and glue things down onto the paper in order to build his paintings. They, they were uh, kind of in very interesting. He used a lot of recycled paper and uh, made his own paper and that sort of thing. And um, and the other thing I forgot to tell you too was that uh, abstract expressionism, a lot of people thought that that came from 
people thinking that since photography was becoming very popular, that photography was kind of replacing art because historically art was done to document and we would um, show a picture of an, uh, something that had happened or a, maybe a, what a flower looked like and, and have it exactly look the way it looked in real life. Uh, and so they thought, well, photography's here and everybody has a camera now, so we don't need that anymore. So let's move on to something else, which I think is kind of interesting. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we are going to go and we're gonna, you, I would like you to collect all kinds of different uh, pieces of paper. And recycled paper is the obvious choice right now because we're all stuck at home. And there's lots of different ways of looking at that. Uh, so a little bit later on, I'm going to say, ask you to pause this and go on a search for your paper after we talk about uh, maybe a little bit more about what you want your paper to look like. So let's look at a couple of Motherwell's paintings. We've got this one here, and or actually I shouldn't call them paintings, his collages. And a collage is when is French word that means to glue. Uh, you can collage pretty much anything, but most typically people collage paper because it's easy to glue. So collage is, you can see here, he's taken and he's used, this looks like pants. Well, you know, it looks like pants because it is their legs. And he, this was a portrait that he uh, did. And you can see he's got us thinking about all the different places that are, he wants our eye to move through this. This actually looks like somebody that's climbing up, I don't know, climbing up a pole or something. But these were supposed to be pants. And I, I, it, when we reflect on what it is that he wants us to think that person is thinking about. It's a little chaotic here with all those red lines and usually he used a lot of black so I'm wondering if that's what he thinks is going on in this person's head. Uh, here's another collage. This is actually more paint-like uh, and, and then we've got this one here. You can see he's taken a contract of some kind and used that as a background. Uh, these things are, it's just uh, cut paper. If you want, you can cut your paper or you can tear it. Um, I kind of like to do a combination of the two. And then of course he's made his marks. This looks like it's just simply marker. And there's some paint on the outside edges, some more torn paper. This is cut paper. Here's torn paper on that outside edge. And I wonder what happened on May 21st at 9 p.m. because he's made a point of putting that over the contract. Uh, sheet music. That would be fun too if you have some old stuff. Now there are a lot of people out there, myself included, that collect uh, old pieces of paper to use in their art. You guys don't have the benefit of that of course. So, um, But I have some suggestions for other things that you can use. Sheet music, the kind you probably have at home or is the sheet music that you're probably using. Maybe though you can make a copy of your sheet music and use the copy of the original in your art too and that might work really well. Uh, this looks like a map actually and we've got some things that look like possibly wallpaper. You can see he's taken and kind of distressed this a little bit with uh, some paint. If you have paint at home and can do that, that would be great. Here is the word je t'aime, and je t'aime is French for I love you. And that's what he's thinking about in this painting, and or in this collage. Uh, actually, it's a combination of the two. And this is called Pink Mirror, which I think is kind of fun. You notice that, obviously, this is the mirror here, and he wants us to think about what we're what maybe you might imagine is in that mirror. And I don't know, what, what do you think this looks like? I think it looks like a door, but uh, maybe it's a window, who knows? Now here is an example of one that I did for another class. Now I don't think we aren't gonna be able to do all of these things, I don't think, because um, I was using leftover paper from a project that we used in one of the classes at school. And, but I do want to show you how this works. I think this is a nice 
sample for showing you've got your torn paper because it, what it hap what happens is, is that you don't get all the color. Oh, and look, I love you. I just noticed that where somebody had put that on the paper that I used. I am using shapes, lots of different shapes. And you see this negative space here? We talked about negative space a little bit in one of the uh, earlier lessons. Negative space is the absence of something or taking something away. And I like to use negative space in, the, in this, this project. Uh, Motherwell did use negative space and it's a nice way of uh, kind of having something look or having some, uh, being able to focus on something. That's the best way to put it. Also today you are going to do lines around your artwork to have us focus our attention and move our eye around our paper. You can see that I um, cut out a piece of book paper and I liked the words, I'm amazed at you, how shockingly absent-minded. Then I underlined, never forget here, kind of in a fancy way. So, uh, and then we also colored other shapes inside this. So this is kind of an example of what we're shooting for today. The kind of paper that you're going to need. You want to, uh, in a couple of minutes, I'll tell you when to pause it. I want you to go out, out in your house and uh, gather things that are of interest to you. Look for a paper that is a background paper. I am going to today use this old Rayleigh's bag that I've cut up. And we're not going to use the front, but you could use the front if you wanted. We're just going to use that outside edge. And I like this Rayleigh's bag because it's got a handle on it. And we can hang this later on. It could be tall. You can see how I cut it. Let me show you how I cut it here. I cut this bag where I've got the bottom part and one of those panels. That left me, so this is a long piece. That left me with one that is kind of wide. And I think either way, however you want to present it for yourself, you can, you can do um, wide paper or tall paper. I kind of like it extra long or extra wide. I think it's going to add some interest to your work. Uh, other things that you can do, here's another example of a book paper. I uh, just... When I got this book paper, I would looked around to see some words that I, I liked. And, and you can say, see, treat to ice cream. And I started thinking about a circle here. Uh, how about she laughed? Oh, that's another good one, she laughed. Uh, maybe ice cream and parties and rides and everything. Oh, that's a good one too. I'm actually gonna ice cream and parties and rides and everything. I'm going to trace over that to highlight it because I like that. Uh, I've got a little piece of just nothing paper that I've taken and taken a, a circle out, cut a circle out for negative space. And I could ice cream and parties and rides and things. Oh, I like that. Look at, I'm already starting to put things together. Tissue paper works really well, okay? Uh, magazines work well if you want to cut something out. Now this is what really, this was my focus. I like bright future of unlimited opportunity. And you can see this is just a mail that came in, uh, that I'm actually going to, um, was going to throw away. But I like this bright future of unlimited opportunity. Any kind of construction paper, or this is scrapbook paper, just for the color. I have an old color book, and I'm going to use one of the pages in my old color book. And I like this. Toby was a tightrope walker, and he was a had a bright future of limited opportunity, bright future of opportunity. And I liked it too because uh, it has orange in it. So those colors are working really well together too. You've got uh, magazines again. So I had a catalog here in magazines and I love his smile. I'm thinking I'm gonna use that. 
I've got some paper that I had already painted that I pulled out that I thought had some nice color to it. And when I turned them around to see what they were, one's an old ledger paper, I really liked how when I let it dry, do you see how that kind of turned into some interesting uh, kind of pattern work on there? And look at this, that purple. I'm thinking I'm not gonna use this front. I might use the back because, and again, I'm pulling in that orange. The purple works with the blue, so think about how you um, can use your colors. Uh, we talked about this before, we've got old, um, or any, it doesn't even have to be old, but uh, um, uh, wrap, wrapping paper. I've got old, uh, this is scrapbook paper, and how about a map? I don't know if anybody has a map around their house. I actually collect them because I use them. Again, it's one of the things that I use in my own art. And here's a piece, I was thinking I could, this is an old watercolor, uh, kind of an old yucky watercolor paper that I was using to play with colors. I could tear this up or I could actually use it for my background. And I've got some colored tissue here as well. When you're also looking for supplies, think about how you're gonna make your marks. Maybe you wanna use uh, just your markers, I want you to think more about black, but a dark color works as any kind of a dark color. Uh, maybe you want to do some oil pastels if you have oil pastels, crayons if you have crayons. I wish I had crayons here, but I discovered that I don't. I think I donated them all earlier on this year. But um, crayons or oil pastels work really well. And I'm going to show you about how just to use a pencil to kind of have things move around and how to shade behind some things too. If you have some uh, special markers, I have a, this is a copper pen and I think I might use that. Colored pencils, even a little paint will be good. So now you've got all kinds of ideas for supplies. It is time for you to pause this video and for you to uh, run out, collect all the things that you're gonna use for this project. Keep in mind colors that work together. So you can see I started with orange and I've got some blues and greens in here too that I'm gonna kind of highlight in my work. You wanna think about all different kinds of paper, you wanna think about mark making, you wanna think about, um, also I want you to come up with a a word or a feeling or maybe a phrase or a poem or if you're listening to music maybe there's a lyric in a music in a piece of music that are is uh, inspiring to you I did was think listening today while I was exercising I was listening to you two and I love their song it's a beautiful day that would be a fantastic uh, inspiration for your expressionist abstract art so go out, hunt it down, find your inspiration, a word, a feeling. Uh, maybe you're feeling frustrated and you're gonna, you're gonna do strips of paper for uh, bars. Uh, maybe feel, you're feeling like you're cooped up. Maybe you're overjoyed because you don't have to go to school and you're, you're learning from home. Uh, so go out, find all of that, and come back and we will start again. Okay, we're back. Uh, I am going to start with this piece right here. And I actually, I want my paper to be tall today. I'm going to set this off to the side. And don't get rid of any of this paper either, the brown paper, because the next uh, project we're going to do is we're going to be thinking about cardboard. So I want you to have that in your mind too uh, when we do our next video. I'm going to be thinking about cardboard and all the things that you can make make with cardboard. And since this is a kind of a heavy brown paper, these bags, we're going to be able to use that as well. So don't throw that away. Save any scraps that you have for next time. So I've got my uh, bright future lim unlimited opportunity. I'm just going to rip this and. Think in here. I want, and 
my Sharpie isn't working very well there, so I'm going to go to, because it's slick, I'm going to go where my oil pastels go. There they are. I'm going to take my oil pastels and it doesn't have to be scientific, but you see how I'm blocking out everything else? And we're just going to forget because I've got that blue over that. We're going to forget about all the other all the other things. And I'm actually going to go down into my orange here because I want to get rid of that. And I'm going to Oh, and I have a fun scissor here. I have these. I bought these for I don't remember what reason, but they're called pinking shears, but they make that Kind of fun design down on the bottom. So I've gotten rid of that. And next, so that's my focus. I'm going to put it up more towards the top. I don't want it smack dab in the center because smack dab in the center uh, makes it boring. You want to have it a little up and maybe a little to the left or a little to the right, however that works for you. I'm going to take some tissue that I've already uh, ripped and I've got these feet. And all I care about is the feet. And I have, I'm gonna have. So all these things, let's just get, cut them up Get them ready to um, be used in here. I want to make this be a circle. My map here. You can either just cut it randomly or you can use a pencil too if you want to make it a little more perfect. I'm not a perfect person. Perfect thing. So I'm going to just put this back here. It's kind of interestingly and I'll, we'll, we'll rearrange a little later. Okay, so I said I was going to use this. I am. I am going to tear this very carefully. It kind of looks like a waterfall to me. And does it need to be perfect? Absolutely not. There's another piece for myself. And I want to bring some of this orange in. So what shapes do I need? I've got a circle. I've got a couple of rectangles, kind of a random organic shape. They're all about the same size, so I need to either, I, I'm going to make them bigger. We're working with a really big, long piece, so I am going to there we go, something longer. And I've also got Toby the tightrope walker. And you know what I'm going to do? I like this. I am going to cut these legs out. And I'm not doing a, like a super perfect job, which I would do a better job if I wasn't trying to move quickly with you guys. But I'm going to cut these legs out. Because they look like something that could be my legs. And I'm going to have them walking the tightrope with Toby. How about that? There. And I, do you see I broke them in half? There we go. Okay, so. I am walking the tightrope with Toby here, and I'm going to leave. I kind of like that. i got this. 
Yeah. All right, now I said already that we were going to work on placement in a little bit. So I like this guy here. I want a square. I don't have a square. And this will be a good square. It's nice to keep your shapes varied because that's going to help move the eye around. Now you may not use everything that you've cut out, but you might. Toby and I are walking that tightrope. I'm also looking at this and I'm feeling like it's kind of lending itself more towards a wide piece of paper. You see how that, oh look. Yeah, look. So I've got my green tissue and it is really lending itself to more of a wide piece of paper. So I need to get this other transfer all of that, funny how that happened, huh, to and again, you may not want to use everything. I'm going to tear this a little bit because I want more than one just great big strip. I'm going to do this and this and this. And gosh, I'm not even sure this works anymore. Maybe I'll just keep that. And now that I've got wide, I need to have her take this and move this wide. You are going to be playing with this all of these little pieces and making it so it feels comfortable to you. And I actually think he's too big, this square. I'm just going to cut set this. I don't know why, but I'm feeling like I need to have this off all by itself here. Okay, so now I'm going to, I want to glue all of this down and I'm going to do it super quick. Now that you have all your papers glued down, it's time to add those lines that kind of direct your eye. Not only that, but maybe a little bit of highlighting you can, that you can do. So a couple of ways to do your highlighting. Maybe you want to, if you have paints at home, paints are awesome. If you don't, like many of you don't, uh, if, and maybe you want to do this using pencil. So I've got, I already showed you blocking this out. I want us to kind of focus on his face. So I'm just going to put just a little bit of a frame with my pencil. Around his face. 
also I am going to make a trail of I'm going to do black. Motherwell used a lot of black and tightrope walking. I'm going to extend this tightrope all the way to the end of my paper. So I've extended my tightrope all the way to the end of my paper. And what am I going to do here? I'm thinking I need some orange. So How about concentric lines around this? And I'm going to build it out, and it's okay to go across. also want to add, where's my black oil pastel? I want to add O. The places you will Go. Do you know that Dr. Seuss? And I'm going to look at that. I've decided I'm going to do some arrows. I'm going to block something down here with some marks so we don't lose sight of the fact that Toby was a tightrope walker. And I think I'm going to use my pencil again because I've got pencil here. I want to, I'm just going to fill in space. Like that. This now is empty here. And in keeping with, okay, we can use a lot of different supplies, I am going to, blue is lost here. So I'm going to take some blue and paint and fill in my space. And to balance it, now this is unbalanced. I need to, I'm going to do triangles. And that's kind of making me feel more like the arrows as well. And we're going to get a little smaller as they go up to vary it a little bit. And that's not too bad. Now I could take some of this paint as well and I could do some shadows under him. That might be kind of interesting. So it looks like he's I think that's good. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with and uh, what your Motherwell abstract expressionist collages are. Next time, don't forget, we are going to want to collect our uh, cardboard and uh, we're going to be thinking about making something out of cardboard. So I look forward to seeing you uh, in a couple of days.